right, so moving on. <clears throat> this is another watercolor by Mary White. Um, so a few things to look at in this one. Again, all of the sharp edges and focus is right here on the figure. Um, so you can also see that this focus is not dead center on the page. So again, like when we talked about composition, um, having the center of interest not exactly dead center um, makes it just a little bit more interesting. Um, she also highlights the face by putting all of these light areas around the face. Since she has a darker complexion, that area stands out a lot more um, when it has brighter areas next to it. She also, again, uses a limited color palette. So it's blue, you've got this yellow, um, and then you've got um, some of this kind of reddish brown again. Um, so the limited color palette also plays a big part in keeping this unified. And again, pay attention to um, the different techniques she uses. So you can see how all of this faded stuff that blends together, um, all of the typical things you think about when you think of a watercolor, all these really blendy areas. Um, that is that wet on wet technique. Again, wet paper, so you wet the paper with clean water and then you're dropping the color on top of that. Um, and then you've got more dry brush and um, wet on dry over here where it's really controlled and focused. And you've got some of that where you have like little lines um, to show like cracks in the wood and detail like that too. And also keep in mind where she's being very careful keeping the whites of the pages preserved or the white of the watercolor page uh, preserved for um, the bright highlights on the figure and in the window and even on the walls. Right. All right, so this one is another portrait watercolor artist um, named Raj Kumar Stavathi. He is an artist from India. And he is also really good at, you know, preserving these whites on the page. Again, limited color palette, whites still being preserved all throughout the page, showing you those bright highlights and areas of interest. Um, you've got this figure who looks pretty centered on the page, but if you look at actually how his face kind of lines up with the page, he's not quite centered. So again, keeping it a little bit offset, using those limited color palettes, um, choices and res preserving the whites on your page. Um, something that Raj Kumar Stabathi does really good is backgrounds. So he gets these really cool background washes on there first. So um, all he does is he pre-wets that whole background area and then he drops in the colors that he wants on there and lets the water kind of do its thing with there. Um, you can also kind of like lift your page and make some drips and things like that, which it looks like he does a little bit when you can see some of the stuff dripping down. Uh, this is another painting by Rajkumar Stabathi. This is a painting from the rickshaw series he's done. Um, so again, he has this big background wash. Um, so that's one of the first things he'll put in is that big background. Um, and just start dropping those colors in there and then he'll kind of work on the figure and add some more details on there and you'll notice all these really bright white highlights everywhere those are really what's drawing interest and in, in keeping your focus um, on all of the detail going on on the person's face on his clothing and even on uh, the rickshaw his little taxi bike here um, so in this one he's using a little bit more colors so um, part of the reason I wanted to show you Raj Kumar Stabathi was that he does use um, a little bit more color choices than, than the other artists did. So you can see he's got blue and he's got orange and he's got um, green and um, really bright red and yellow. So there's a lot more colors going on here, but I want you to notice what he does to kind of keep those from feeling too isolated. All right. So if you look at like the bright red right here. If he had only put this on this um, part of the bike, it might feel a little broken up. Instead, um, he has it right here. He moved it onto that handle up here. He even put it on the shirt of the figure, 
a little bit down here in the bike uh, on the like, chain and stuff down there and even started to have some of that red behind the chair, behind the figure's head, on his arm, and a little bit on his face. So he's moving that red all around the picture so that way no one area feels too isolated. Um, same thing with the yellow. So he's got most of the yellow focused on right here, but you can also see a little bit of it on his arm. You can also see a little bit of it on this arm and just a tiny little bit in the background here and there um, and a little bit on the top of the rickshaw, um, like the little cover right here. So even if he's blending that color with other colors, he's making sure that it goes all around the painting so no one area feels like it's dominated by a color. Okay, every, every single area on the painting has a little bit, at least a little bit of the color everywhere on it. Okay, so that's something to think about. If you do end up using a, a, a more colors, like a less limited palette, um, then you'll have those kind of challenges of where you can move those colors around so that way everything still looks unified. The benefit with a limited color palette is that it's much easier to kind of put those colors everywhere naturally. Um, whereas with this, you might have to kind of make some artistic changes. Um, so um, there's a good chance that the emblem on this man's shirt was not that bright red, and the artist decided to make it that bright red so that way it went with the colors on the rickshaw. Um, same thing, maybe his shorts weren't orange, but it you know blended better into the red colors and, and into his skin tone. Things like that or what you have to think about. You'd have to make these artistic changes to kind of make all of those colors work together. Okay, so this is another Rajkumar Stabathi painting. This one is actually uh, more of like a cityscape. So this is like windows at the side of a building, but just take a look at how loose like the big areas are. All of these big like walls and stuff really really loosely painted washes he might have done like some splatter on it down toward the bottom um it, but he he kept it pretty loose other than whenever you get into these like really like kind of dirty looking areas like here um then then he spent some more time kind of throwing some splatter on there and doing a little bit more detail with with the smaller brush um and then you've got kind of like these wires coming across that he would do kind of all of the detail work all of the stuff that's like really textural detailed stuff the windows um these lines coming down the folds up here all of that stuff is kind of added in last like you add in all of the big basic washes behind it like this wall back here um and then you start layering more and more detail on top of it so, I mean, he's probably got hundreds and hundreds of layers of watercolor paint on here to be able to get to this level of detail. So it's all about building up those different layers and adding more and more detail, more and more darks as you go. Okay, so from light to dark. All right. Um, these are, this is a watercolor artist who does a lot of animals. And this one is called Waiting for the Fog to Lift, and it's by Morton Sulzberg. Um, so, again, I wanted to show you his artwork because he leaves a lot of white in his artwork. A lot of white from the paper stays on there. So, really, the only part he's painting is just like maybe half the page. Um, and, and he's really selective about where he starts to fade things out and make it really like look like a foggy, snowy scene like that. Um, even like the wolf in the background is more faded out than the, than the wolf up here. Um, so all of those you're just going to be able to get from different techniques of how you're applying the paint. Either, you know, more loose back here is going to be that wet on wet. This might be a little bit more of the wet on dry, so it's still a little bit loose, but has a little bit more control. And then up here with the fur, you're going to get some dry brushing and, and a lot of... Um, more detailed things at, at the at the front so it kind of comes forward when you have texture in a painting so like the texture of the fur um, the texture of these rocks those things tend to come forward so they tend to be more like a focus of the, of the painting whereas if it's softer those things tend to recede to the back so that really helps create this illusion of depth in this painting okay and also the areas of white everywhere are really kind of drawing you into this dark spot right here really really quickly 
and again, it's not dead center on the page for your foc for your focus uh, or center of interest. All right, this is another one by Morton Sulzberg. This one is called Northern Monarch, um, and it is a polar bear. And again, a huge chunk of the white on the page still, and just like this little area right here that he's got um, painted. Um, another thing you need to look at on this are the colors he's using. So if you look at the colors in the background, you've got this blue, you've got this green, and you've got this kind of like uh, muddy yellow. All of those same colors are being repeated on the polar bear just in different ways. The polar bear, a majority of it is kind of got this muddy yellow color, um, but you can also see some of that green in the fur. Um, you can see some of that blue being mixed in there with uh, the green and, and uh, like kind of making that muddy brownish color right here. So you can see it in the background down here and you can see it on the polar bear and his fur over here too. Um, and then he's just had a lot of fun like really just kind of splattering some of that paint to give some of those effects like that. Um, but it's really loose in the background and then really tight on where he wants you to focus on the figure, on the polar bear. All right, this is another one by Morton Soulsberg. So this one is really focused on these rocks over here. Um, again, he's kind of got that limited color palette going on. He's got like green, yellow, blue, and maybe a little bit of like a brownish red in there. Um, and those are the only colors he's using. He's leaving a lot of that white on here to show that texture um, and, and to create those kind of washy effects that he wants. Um, and you almost forget about the people in the background. You almost don't see them until you really have looked over this area well. And that's a lot has a lot to do with all of that texture on there, um, all of the contrast between the really dark um, creases in the rocks and the really bright spots on them. Um, and it's kind of touching like this dark background that kind of blends in. So your eye is just drawn here automatically. And then you slowly start to fade out to the background and you see these spirit writers in the background. And so um, <clears throat> the title of it is Rain Calls the Spirit Writer. So obviously the artist wanted this to be a focus, but he wanted it to be like this whole experience of finding the, them and making them more mysterious. They're spirit writers. So he, he didn't want them to be like, you know, very super obvious. They, they, they wanted them to be kind of mysterious and, and in the background a little bit. Okay, so these are the, think of like what you would want your artwork to create, what kind of effect you would want it to have on the viewer, um, and then think about how you can use all of these different tools to create that effect. All right, so now we will talk a little bit about some watercolors that I created. So my watercolors, um, obviously not quite as great as those artists, but um, mine usually focus on portraiture. Um, you may have seen this jack-in-the-box kind of sitting in our room, hanging up in the art room. Um, this one over here on the left is was a commission. So I do a lot of portraitures for commissions, but I do take some things that I've learned from kind of observing these master artists. Like, so look at my background. It's that kind of loose wash. Again, the background over here, that loose um, kind of faded wash like that um, is, is pretty um, similar to what like Raj Kumar Stabathi did with his uh, artwork. Uh, this one is Bruce Lee. Again, look at that background. Um, look at how I get the colors and I make sure that they're repeated throughout every part of it. So you've got this kind of bright yellow that's going all the way around Bruce Lee. It's kind of in his skin here and there. You've got the orange that's kind of being repeated in the background and over here. Um, the blues, you've got blues in his hair, a little bit in the shadows, and things like that kind of to repeat everywhere. And then, you know, he had these like kind of scratches on him from um, combat. And so I kind of splattered some of that red around everywhere too to kind of get that red to carry all the way through as well. 